I'm legging it down the street. I'm, le- I'm like going at it, right? And screaming at the top of my lungs. I'm screaming, no, stop, come back. Hi everyone. So Friday night, I was walking down the street and uh, minding my own business. <laughs> And then out of nowhere, completely to my surprise, a scooter flies past me and grabs my handbag. In it, I had my keys, my wallet, my phone, my headphones, uh, basically anything you would have in your bag, of course. (laughs) And uh, it was just so unexpected, so surprised. Obviously a professional thief. Uh, Next thing I know, I'm legging it down the street. I'm I'm like going at it, right? And screaming at the top of my lungs i'm screaming no stop come back leave the keys leave the phone and i'm thinking like i don't care about the money i don't care about my cards i don't get but like oh my god please just just drop the bag just drop the bag so i'm i'm running and i'm running and i'm running and then there's like all these people running too because i'm also screaming like my children because i'm thinking like how am i going to get into my house and how like what's going to happen i'm thinking about the cats and the cats like how much food do they have and i'm going i'm going i'm going and now there's people with bicycles and they're going and everyone's trying to stop this guy and he's going fast. I mean, he was driving on the sidewalk and he's like, jumps up, grabs the bag off my shoulder. And of course I let it go right away. Thank God I didn't fall over. He, he jumps off the sidewalk and he's off, you know, he's, he's gone. And, um, oh, and there was a guy next to me and he's like screaming like, I'll kill him. I'll kill him. I'm going to get him. I'm going to kill him. Let's kill the guy, <laughs> which, you know, is, is insane. Um, <clears throat> But eventually I get to sort of the next traffic light. Uh, I think I did like three blocks like that. And then I get to the next traffic light and like I finally stop and have to accept the fact that it's gone. Uh, my house keys are gone. My phone is gone. And everything in my phone is gone. My wallet is gone. All my ID, my driver's license, my bank card, my uh, identity card, my medical card, everything. And this group is forming around me and it's like, what the hell do we do? And what, like, where did he go and stuff like that? So I call the police and they are like, oh yeah, we're not going to help you at all. (laughs) Um, There's nothing we can do. Just go to the police station and uh, denounce it and and open a report. And I had this, um, this fantasy in my head that, you know, something like this happens and police actually arrive and they take a statement, but that's not the case anyway. um, And so that's why my voice uh is is insane right now because uh, i did damage my vocal cords with the screaming <clears throat> physically okay <laughs> i didn't fall over i didn't get hurt which is in itself the best thing uh, in the world but i wanted to share this with you because even though my voice is a mess um i want to share it with you while it's fresh so it's funny <clears throat> um when you get uh, to a space where you're philosophical or spiritual or whatever you want to call it the way that I am, you tend to look pretty quickly for the silver lining and things. And over the past couple of days in reflection of what happened, I've had uh, some interesting thoughts and realizations. Here's the first one. The first one is that there were many things that I was wanting. And if you guys haven't checked out my video on how to get everything you want, uh, I definitely suggest you watch that. I'm going to put a little card here, but here but um make sure to watch this video through first because it's interesting and then you can go and check that one out but i did this video i think a day before uh was it thursday on how to get everything you want and vagrian in that channeling shared that you're always getting what you want even when you think you're not getting what you want and you know getting robbed in the street and in quite you know an aggressive manner uh most people would think it's not what they want and definitely not on a personal human level what you want but um you know i wanted to take that channeling and that transmission to heart um i also think it's funny that i do um get to have these lessons firsthand when uh, i'm channeling like so <clears throat> that transmission you know i i didn't really have a way to apply it or to understand it on my own skin in my own individuation but now I do. <laughs> um, and so getting what you want, right? So does anyone want their bag stolen and all their stuff stolen and the hassle and the, uh, the fear and the experience of that? No, but um, there were many things that I did want that getting my bag stolen was actually the fastest way to realize those. And some of those things were things along the line of 
I'd been suspecting for some time that my security level, uh, my personal security and safety level wasn't up to speed, wasn't, I wasn't paying enough attention to those types of things. And that uh, there were certain changes that I could make to my lifestyle that would make things better. So for example, recently I've been taking self-defense um, in the form of Krav Maga and uh, that has, you know, got me a little bit into a space of self confidence, self sovereignty. And it has got me into thinking about like what could happen if you were accosted in the road. <laughs> and so simultaneously my thinking about hmm, what could you have, what could you do? What, what would happen if that would happen to you was calling in that energy but also calling in the desire to know what I would do in that sort of situation. Um, in this particular case, uh, it seems that adrenaline appears immediately for me and I have a defined root um, center in my human design. And that really showed up in this experience. So instead of being like shocked and, and frozen, I went directly into that giant sprint and I'm really fast by the way. Um, and then uh, that was something that I didn't know about myself. So I do have the ability to act and respond right away to something happening, which is great to know about myself. Um, I might not have responded in the most uh, safe way uh, because the truth of the matter is, is chasing a guy on a scooter down the street who's just done something violent and aggressive towards you isn't necessarily perhaps the most intelligent thing to do in that you don't know if they're going to stop turn around and start fighting you right and like in a battle i'm not going to be able to take on this guy who's twice my weight or or more <clears throat> but i know now that I'll, I'll definitely be able to respond so i don't have to have that fear i'm capable right so in another situation i can run that fast away from an aggressor so that gives me a lot of confidence as well maybe carrying a handbag on my shoulder isn't something that I want to continue doing uh, moving forward, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to have fear for that. I'm just going to have to come up with strategies for that. And another thing that I had wanted that the bag situation um, resolved was I wanted to have a security um, in my phone. I wanted to update my passwords. I wanted to make sure that my accounts were secure. I wanted to make sure that I could access things even if I did lose the phone. In fact, uh, earlier that day I was working um, on some projects and I had an issue. I couldn't log into an account. And the only way that you could log into that account was by, you know, checking your phone and checking the password on the phone or confirming the password on the phone. And I even said out loud to the universe, I don't know what I would do without my phone. <laughs> And now I do know what I would do. <laughs> I would find another solution. It's very important to have your emergency contact people's phone numbers available to you that's somewhere not on your phone, whether that be memorizing them or that be um, having them written down somewhere that you can access. <clears throat> another thing <laughs> I realized, and this is another thing I'm gonna have to do is uh, I have to change all the locks in my house. Um, is uh, I wanted to make sure that my front door was more secure. And I'd said that also earlier in the week that I wasn't entirely sure that the locks on the doors were up to standard with, you know, what is required if someone were to want to get into my house. So that is something that I now have the opportunity to address very quickly. Whereas before I probably would have kept putting it off and saying like, oh, I can deal with this later. It's not a big deal. I didn't have the ability to get the spare. So the first problem I want to address after this happened so I didn't head off to the police station right away. The first problem I had to address when this happened was getting into my house. So I walked back to my condominium apartment complex and I was lucky enough to find the doorman there and he let me into the uh, complex and he had uh, access to some phone numbers that I needed. So I started making some phone calls and couldn't get through to the person who had the spare keys but I did manage to get a hold of my sister-in-law and um, get in touch with her. And she was able to come with the car, pick me up, and we head off to the police station where it took about two hours to file the report. Um, and they didn't say much. They did give me the information on how to get the cards again, how to cancel the phone, how to um, get my driver's license to be able to drive this week, the temporary one, and do some other things that I would need to do during the week after having this problem. And so I dealt with that. And then 
she had a place for me to stay. She had an apartment that was empty and gave me the keys to that. So I got to get to the apartment and sleep or at least get to the apartment and have the emotional freak out that I needed to have and allow those emotions to go through. It was almost a panic attack, the panic attack that was required and the shaking that was required to get the adrenaline out of the system. So that was also a beautiful opportunity to deal with not allowing those emotions to get trapped in the system. I think this might be one of the most important things to remember when something does happen that upsets you is that it is quite crucial to as soon as possible allow yourself to feel the feelings. Then in the morning, got back in the house and called the locksmith and started to uh, arrange to get a new phone uh, but it was pretty um intense the amount of administration stuff that needed to be done but the great news is, is that as i'm doing this administration now i'm also setting myself up for not having to do this in any future situations that might arise that would be similar whether it be you leaving your bag on the train by accident or you know someone lifting it off, uh, you know, the back of your chair at a restaurant, etc. Um, <clears throat> other things I wanted to do, and I had called into my experience or was calling into my experience was, I had found that lately, the phone and my access to the phone had been upsetting. Um, there's a lot going on in the world and social media is not a very pleasant place to interact. And I'd been saying for a while that I was having too much screen time, I was interacting with social media too much and trying to figure out a way to prevent myself from doing that. <laughs> and what better way than to start from scratch with the phone and set up to start off with better practices. So I'm now going to be committing to not, or at least to having one day a week where I'm not using any form of social media, which will be my Saturdays. And, um, arranging my phone to be far more minimalist and have less apps on it so that I'm not as distracted as often. So I'll be taking less time on Instagram and things like that and focusing my energy into creating content here or to um, doing other things, living things in my actual life. You know, it's, it's quite funny how so much comes to you, even through bad situations or bad, what can be perceived of as bad situations. You know, I have this sense of yes, um, maybe before I was more naive or thought like, okay, if you're walking with someone, you're not a target, you're not um, attractive to a thief, um, or maybe if you're in the right neighborhood, you're not attract, like there's not those people around. Um, but you know what, you're in sole contract with everyone. And whoever this person was or is, the thing that I know 100% for fact is that I'm better off than them. I know this for a fact because I know that I'm not in a position where I feel the need to harm someone else for my own benefit. And if you feel like you're in the position where you need to harm someone else for your own benefit and you've made choices throughout your life that have allowed you to justify in yourself that a behavior like that is okay without thinking of the consequences or the impact on the other person then you're probably in a space of suffering and you're probably in a space of self-hatred um, because if you do love yourself deeply you also automatically love everybody else and I have nothing but compassion for someone who hates themselves. The same way that source energy has nothing but compassion for someone who hates themselves and nothing but love. And so um, to this other self that uh, chose that action on Friday night, I would say, even though I can't understand directly from my own human experience, I can wish for them relief from the pain that they're feeling that causes them to believe that that is okay. I wish them an understanding and the moving quickly through the sorrow of the realization of the pain that they've caused me or 
others. This person was a professional, so it was not their first time doing this thing um, for sure, because the motorino was going way too fast. <laughs> The confidence that they had in just taking the bag was way too strong. Um, it was just too good. <laughs> and, you know, they didn't gain anything. Um, they only gained the amount of cash that was in the bag, and it wasn't that much. Um, and they lost way more than I did. They also gained a sense of security in myself. Though I can't prevent the catalysts that are going to rise for me in my experience, what I do know is that I'm able to process quickly, I'm able to flip the script quickly, I'm able to reframe very quickly, and I'm able to experience things without tumbling deeply into a state of suffering. You cannot avoid the things that are on your path. You can, however, avoid the suffering that could be presented from the things on your path. That's something to be very proud of. That's something to be very content with in myself and to feel safe within. The knowing that unconditionally, whatever happens, there's aspects of me now uh, through my growth and my understanding of my own existence that can find a way to be okay. And being okay is the important thing. Being well is the important thing in any circumstance. And that is a desire I've held for a long time to know that deeply in myself. So that is absolutely beautiful. I'd also like to say that leading up to this event, I have been feeling a sense of foreboding or fear or preoccupation or worry or anxiety. And even the night that it happened um, earlier, a couple minutes earlier, I had been um, waiting to meet someone. And I was waiting in this piazza and there was a bench there and I was looking at my phone and seeing when, you know, when I can meet them. And I just said, you know what? This isn't right. I, this is not the right place to wait. There was that sense of like, mm, something's off. So I got up and I started walking down the street where eventually I did have the um, aggression occur and trying to decide where to stop to have uh, some food, a dinner. And I was going to say to, to the person who was meeting me, like, let's meet here to, to my partner. And every place I looked into felt off. There was something off. You know, there was something off about that cute little restaurant. There was something off about that place to grab a glass of wine. I passed, you know, maybe seven, eight places before I met my partner. And it was just off. And then we even walked by one other place about 40 seconds before uh, the bag was stolen. And, you know, I was saying like, should we go in here? And I went, no, there's, and it was on the same side of the street. And it was literally within the range of where, you know, a couple seconds later, the bag was stolen. And I was like, no, there's something off. The offness of the evening was there from you know, 20, 30 minutes before. And it wasn't a surprise. I mean, it was a surprise that the bag was taken. And it was a surprise when it was taken and how it was taken and the running and the screaming and the help of the people afterwards. The scenario was a surprise, but the offness was 100% accurate. And so even though that sensation of something being off didn't prevent the catalyst from occurring. It did prepare me for the ability to respond, I think. The knowing in advance, the fact that my higher self was saying, hey, listen, something is about to happen. Have your antenna up, have your radar on. It doesn't mean that you're going to avoid the something, but it does mean that I'm with you that I am aware of everything in the universe that is coagulating or <laughs> is not the right word or connecting in order to bring you what you're wanting. And it might not be pleasant and it might be a surprise, but it's going to be okay. And that is interesting, isn't it? It's so interesting that that was the case. You know, I just, I just been pondering that since. 
and just feeling good that there is that ability to feel into the waves of the energies connecting and the karmas connecting between myself and this other self that stole the bag. It's just really intense. Another interesting thing that happened around this story that I want to share with you is just two days ago or three days ago, maybe the day before, maybe Thursday, I don't remember what day exactly it was. I had a participant session. And in that session, the participant asked about Moldavite, the crystal. <laughs> and they were asking Dagrian um, whether or not the Moldavite that they had recently obtained and had had the inspiration to bring into their life was in some way responsible for the death of their their pet and um Dagrin had you know this quite surprising response that moldavite specifically is one of the crystals that um although it does not create catalysts in your life it does accelerate you to getting what you're wanting or calling in from your vortex so you in collaboration and in consent with that crystal will be deciding on your higher self level to call in your desires faster. <laughs> now, uh, we are set up so as to call in and there is that famous phrase like God only gives you what you're able to handle. Um, Moldavite seems to, according to Vagrin, give you what you're able to handle on a more intense level. So what you don't necessarily think that you can handle on a human level but then ultimately you can handle and sometimes often that will look like catalyst so you'll I mean if you're interested in this, you can look up online the properties of Moldavite and the um, abilities that it has and you'll find a lot of people <laughs> saying to not use that crystal because it causes all kinds of havoc and chaos and uh, experiences and then you'll find on the other end of the spectrum. People talking about its potency and its power and its ability to transmute and transform and i found this fascinating because lo and behold the moldavite ring that i hadn't worn for years um and you know you don't know why necessarily that you or was it years yeah it's a couple of years that you you know use a crystal or you don't use a crystal you know you go instinctual at least i go instinctually um of course you know after my session with this participant I had decided to wear my ring and I was wearing a ring uh, when the bag was stolen. So moral that story is if you have Moldavite, um, do use it responsibly. This is exactly what that green said. Uh, I think in the analogy, and I'll share that transmission with you as well. Um, they had said, if you're using, <laughs> if you're using one of those jet packs, you know, to fly, um, it's best to use one of those jet packs, maybe over a body of water and not inside a uh, low ceiling uh, basement because uh, you might hit your head on the ceiling. So Moldavite is kind of like having a jet pack. And if you're going to use it, use it responsibly in the right environment, in the right situation, when you're actively actually calling in that acceleration in a, a concrete form. I don't know that much about where the metaphysical meets with the physical. But clearly, um, crystals is one of those areas where they do. <laughs> and I'm not currently wearing the ring. <laughs> it is now safe and sound back in its box. So um, enough, enough action and activity for today or for this week or for this month or until I decide, hey, you know what? It might be a great idea to uh, play around with that jetpack again. So probably I will be giving myself a little bit of rest uh, before I get back to things. I'm not entirely sure if I'll be doing the meditation Monday tomorrow. So do um, check in. I mean, I might spontaneously want to do it at 12. Depends how I wake up in the morning and night. Also depends on whether or not I'm going to be able to get my documents redone, whether I'm going to be able to um, get my driver's license um, in time because I have to drive this weekend. So do check in you'll be notified if you hit the bell icon um and so do do that do subscribe because there's many more transmissions to come and like this video if you like this video leave a comment below to say hello and um guys be safe and uh take care of yourselves sending all my love